I was trying to think, because I've made a, a lot of recordings for Philips Classics, probably over 20 separate CDs all told. Um, and to condense this down to three was quite a challenge. Um, and I thought it should be a mixture of major works and small pieces. And I th also thought perhaps to give it something slightly different, it would be nice to split those up into three different nationalities of composers that, that you know, I've recorded the most of, I suppose, during my time. One of the things referred to is the Holy Boy and also the Vaughan Williams Romance from the Tuba Concerto. And what interests me is that these were works that the composers themselves had arranged for cello. And also the Elgar Romance, um, which originally he wrote for bassoon. Um, and the Vaughan Williams uh, was for, from the tuba concerto. And the Holy Boy, of course, was originally a piano piece. And I think that the composers obviously felt th these works would work on the cello. And that was one reason I, I wanted to record them. Um, the Arlen's a beautiful piece. Um, you know, a lovely melody, but strangely individual. Um, little phrases tail off and go down slightly strange alleyways. And um, I, I think it's fascinating. Uh, originally, he arranged it for um, cello and piano. And then I asked Christopher Palmer, who's a really first-rate arrangement and loved John Arland, um, to, to make this arrangement for cello and strings. I think quite a few of the pieces on, on all three of the CDs can be would be very suitable in collaboration with a bigger piece, in, if, for example, as an encore. And I think, you know, the Holy Boy, John Arland's Holy Boy as an encore after the Elgar, or the Holst Invocation in the same concert as the Elgar um, would work very, very well. And I think that's a sad thing about actually modern concert life is that, you know, it still very largely sticks to the overture, concerto and symphony format. And you... So a lot of pieces that are really very well known, um, you think for the cello for Elegy, the Brook Col Nidra, uh, those kind of very well known pieces to all, to all of us are actually not very often heard in the concert hall, which I think is sad. The Holst um, Invocation, I did give its first performance, I think in 1982, um, since the year it was written or first performed, which was 1911, by May Mukley. And um, it had been a work that he had put aside. I don't think he'd actually ever said it can't be published, but he had put aside um, maybe to look at again to work in the future, which never happened. And then Imogen Holst um, was very, very protective, I think, of um, of music that hadn't been published in his time, let's put it that way. And um, it was Colin Matthews who was working with Imogen at Faber's who looked at the score, you, you know, and, and really he was the one who persuaded Imogen, said, look, this really is a very interesting piece. It certainly should be performed. And uh, I played it on um, uh, an original uh, release with the Delius Concerto and then recorded it again um, with Phillips um, on, a, on a CD, all of uh, British music called English Idyll. It's a shame in a way that some pieces become so popular, like The Planets uh, with Holston and The Lark Ascending now with Vaughan Williams. And some, there's some wonderful music out there that almost seems to have become overshadowed by the success of these sort of huge um, hits, I suppose. Um, that, that everybody knows.